and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler we're going to be adding in today's video. Today we're going to be adding the Deep Cool Assassin 4. So I've already looked at one deep cool cooler already, which was the um, AK620, which is the current league leader. So when I saw the Assassin 4, which looks like a very attractive cooler, I was thinking, well, this has got to be a hit, right? So I thought, let's buy it. I saw it in Micro Center and I thought, let's get it. Let's get it on the test bed and let's get it tried out. So with that in mind, without further ado, let's get on with the install. After the install, I'll give you my thoughts on the install. I will then go through the scores and give you my final conclusion on the cooler. All right, so here we go. Time for the install. So install wise, I'll cover the basics first. Installing the back plate and the like, the nuts and whatever on top and then the little arms to put the cooler on top. Pretty simple, very, very similar to a lot of the other coolers. Mounting the cooler on there, the actual nuts that stick up for it that you've got to screw into, um, it's a little bit of a challenge to line up, but nothing too bad. You've just got to make sure you take your time so you don't end up smearing 
your thermal grease all over the CPU to make sure you've got enough and get good contact um, so you don't end up having the cooler going straight to the CPU which will impact your temperatures. So that's all the basic stuff. Now on to the non-basic stuff. Um, yeah, I, I tried orientating the cooler as you've seen in the video you've just seen with the install. So the fan was pointing towards the front in the same way that I've done with all the rest of the coolers. However, this cooler is supposed to be orientated with the with the actual fan at the back. So when I put, I managed to install it with the fan, with the fan at the front, but the cables that were included, which includes a resistance cable, which will put, uh, which includes splitters to put both fans into one slot, weren't long enough. So what I had to do is I had to use my own splitter. With that splitter, I was able then to plug. Uh, both fans in. Now the results I got from doing the testing then weren't great. Um, the temperatures were hovering around 74 during the Cinebench testing which I thought for a cooler of this size and quality um, was a little bit off. So I went away and did some research and it seems that if you don't install it that way and don't install the resistor there's a mode for the, the actual cooler, there's performance mode and there's silent mode. And if you don't use the right cables, then you don't get the right performance out of the cooler. So I went back, I reinstalled the cooler, faced it the way it was supposed to be uh, set, and then I retested the cooler, moving my uh, noise detection to keep it in line. So I moved it to the back of my of my test bench, and I was able to do that. So what was the impact? Basically, um, I'm going to go through the temperatures, but the temperatures went down, and so. All in all, you've got to make sure you orientate this cooler the right way because the cables will be long enough and you'll get the best out of this cooler. Silent mode, I wouldn't bother with because all it does is it brings down the RPM of the cooler down a little bit. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it's good. Oh, and the other thing is, make sure that the middle fan you have to take out for installation, you put the right way. There's a nice and handy little arrow on top of the fan that tells you which way it's supposed to go. So make sure you read the manual and pay attention to that. So all in all, um, I've basically created two data sets for this cooler. So now when I go into the results, you're gonna see um, basically two sets. You're gonna say the original data points and the new data points. Then it's uh, the old position in the league, the new position in the league, and basically my conclusion will be go along those results and my conclusion will be based on the new install, not the old install. So without further ado, let's get on to those results. So base temps, the original value for base temperature was 29 with the old installation. With the new installation, it's 26. So obviously that's quite a bit of a drop of three degrees. So, and that's a foreshadow of basically everything we see to come. The actual base sound, didn't really change that much. The bass sound only went down a fraction. It went down from 34.6 to 34.5, which is kind of not a surprise because the fans don't really kick in until the cooler really does anything anyway. The Cinebench score. The Cinebench score didn't actually really change that much either. It went from 4868 to 4870. So that's not really much of a change. We, again, the cooler, although it was warmer, um, bit of a spoiler there, um, with the old configuration, really it didn't get to the point where the performance of the actual CPU would be really impacted. And here we go, max temp. You can see that the old value is 72.7 and the new value is 64. So that's a big decrease in the actual temperatures. You can see it's gone from being one of the worst performers in terms of coolers to being one of the top five. So that's a huge difference. And obviously when I get to the conclusion that will have a big impact on the change of conclusion. Max sound, again not really much of a change. Obviously with the higher temperatures it was working a little bit harder. So the previous max temp was 44.3 and the new max temp is 43.5. So really not much of a difference from 44.3 to 43.5 is still a lot of difference. Um, but still because it was cooler it didn't have to work quite as hard. The scoring ranges haven't changed. The, the Deep Cool Assassin now appears in the top half of the table, which is a great result. 
it would have been you know higher say for instance if the price had been a bit cheaper on this cooler and it would have been competing say you know those if you take if to give it more points for um for value it would have been maybe on 31 32 points which would have been competing for the top three so yeah the price has really sort of kept it further down but on everything else it's performed very very well the bottom half of the table hasn't really changed apart from the fact that the am choice cooler has dropped into the bottom half all right that's on to the results now on to the conclusion so as you saw from those results um, there was a big impact on temperatures. The temp average temperature went down from 74 to 62. So that's a big, big, big deal. So what that means is that the um, cooler performs a lot better. And if you look at the position it went, it went from 28 points to 30 points in the league, which put it firmly from the bottom half of the table into the top half of the table. The, the price they're asking for this of $100 is expensive when you compare it to other coolers like the Peerless Assassin, which is a lot cheaper. It's like $40 and yet performs in a very similar level. So it's very difficult to justify the cost in terms of league position. I would say, however, that the build quality of this cooler is fantastic. The, way, the fact that you can have a performance in silent mode, um, the fact that the, the way the fans clip in, the fact that they give you a bracket to put on the back to add an additional fan if you want to, so you can have three fans on this thing, really to increase the performance. It's just a really good cooler. The performance you get out of it is great. If you put that extra fan on, I'm sure it would get even better. So, you know, if you've got like a, a 99, a, throwing that extra fan on might give you that extra edge to keep those temperatures lower and stop it thermal throttling earlier. So it's a decent cooler. It'd be handy to see it lower in price, but the build quality is fantastic. And if you want to stretch to pay that, then and you like the look of the cooler, then fine. But keep in mind that there are AIOs that will actually probably beat it, which are priced around the same amount from many reputable brands. So I keep that in mind. All right, that's it for this one. Um, I hope you found this video useful. Um, as I say, doing the two sets of uh, in doing the two installs of the two sets of results will hopefully help you avoiding the same mistake that I made. Um, if you've bought this cooler and you want to or ask any questions about this cooler, leave a comment down below. If, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. I release a video around the cadence around once a month. So hitting the bell icon will be cool because then you'll be notified when I put them out. Um, oh, and don't forget to like this video. You know, I had to retest, so there was quite a lot of effort went into it. So I'd really appreciate the likes because they're great for the channel. And as always, take care. Thank <laughs> you.